This is the history of professional selling. Why this is important is because you will see that the history of our profession has led us to a really interesting strategic inflection point. A lot of the things that we're going to go over in the history of selling can help you realize what you're doing wrong in your current job right now. Obviously, selling goes back to cavemen, bartering, all those types of things. But we're talking about professional selling in a business context, especially in the United States. So that's kind of where we're going to start this journey. The insurance profession, what they saw was that they had a sales rep and the sales rep would go out and he would close new business. And then every single month, you have to go back and collect those checks, those premiums every single month. You have to go back and continue to continue, continue to constantly be interacting with existing clients. And that therefore this AE, the account executive, the new business closer, the hunter had no time to get new business because all he was doing is going back and collecting checks from existing accounts he closed years ago. So actually the insurance industry, it really developed the initial role specialization and they developed account executives, AEs or hunters, and account managers, AMs or farmers. So all of this role specialization that we talk about in predictable revenue actually occurred you know, hundreds of years ago uh, with the insurance industry. Fast forward a little bit and you know, we have snake oil salesmen. So early 1900s, the profession was seen as something that was essentially uh, for slimy sales guys, for snake oil salesmen. It seemed as unprofessional and unethical. Then something big happens. Thomas Watson from IBM realizes that the sales team, in fact, is not unethical or unprofessional. It's just the opposite. If we make them professional, it can be a competitive advantage. So what Watson figures out is I'm going to have the baddest sales team on the planet, and that's going to be my competitive advantage. And I'm going to make sure that they're the most trained, educated, professional sales force in the world. To, to sustain this competitive advantage and basically push my products harder than anyone else. And some of the things that IBM and Thomas Watson implemented were official formal sales training programs, focusing on sales force motivation through songs, contests, innovative commission structures, and you know, really focusing on recruiting the smartest damn people to be in sales. It isn't for slimy people. It isn't for uh, people who are fast talkers. It's for smart people who are hungry. And that's kind of what IBM showed us in the early 1900s. Okay, now fast forward a little bit more. Now we're talking about kind of Dale Carnegie uh, and the psychology of selling and EK Strong. So basically, this is where it becomes less of just like really smart people trying hard and more of, okay, there's actually a skill set here. There's things called features and benefits. There's objection handling. There's question types, okay? This is when it became a hard skill. You know, Dale Carnegie shows you how to build rapport and make people like you and to be positive and to never criticize people. All things that are helpful in selling. This is really where it becomes okay, the hard skill component of sales that we're kind of still trying to see today. I think that's a big thing that people have a misconception about in sales. It's not a hard skill. Well, in fact, it's a very, very hard skill. It can be very complicated, you know, combining math, you know, technology, psychology, lots of different things, economics, and people think it's just wheeling and dealing, slimy sales guys. But hopefully this history shows you that over time, this is, our profession has become more and more technical, more and more of a hard skill, and less for slimy sales guys. Okay, so spin selling and solution selling. So this is now we've taken the, we have all these tactical concepts, you know, objection handling and features and benefits, and now we're saying, okay, how do we take those even further? And one of the ways is open-ended questions and solution selling. So even even. You know, as recent as 1988, before 1988, that kind of widespread thought was that you just shove product down the customer's throat. 
And what spin selling basically said was, no, you ask a myriad of questions to identify a need. And if it, if there is a need, then maybe your product can fill it. But you don't just start off, you know, show up and throw up and just talk, talk, talk. No, you have a conversation, you ask questions, you learn about the prospect, and then once you learn about them, then you can offer your solution. That's kind of spin selling in a nutshell. Okay, now printable revenue. So what Aaron saw basically was that the industry had not changed as in terms of team composition for a very long time. Essentially, since the insurance industry, there's always AEs and AMs. And the AEs now are spending just a boatload of time generating leads. So instead of doing that, let's add, a, let's add another specialized sales role called the SDR, the sales development rep. Let's add him to the sales team, and let him help the AE get more leads. So the three key components of the sales process, lead generation, closing, and account management, now each have a specialized rep focusing on that piece of the business. SDRs focus on lead gen, AEs focus on closing, and account managers focus on account management, and upselling, and customer success. So you, know, you, gotta, you gotta think about it upstream. Upstream, you gotta have qualified leads. Those qualified leads, are then vetted by the SDR, they become qualified opportunities. The more qualified opportunities that the AE has, the more sales he will have. This was Aaron's big insight. And now today. So you know, time will tell if, if this is as big of a deal as a lot of us think it is, but th you know, thinking through the, the SaaS sales stack and sales hackers, what's basically happened in the last you know, handful of years, essentially, since Aaron you know, developed his you know, theory in 2011, is we've seen an explosion of tools. Now reps have tools for, CRM has been around for a long time, but now we have document management, email automation, contract management, proposal management, you name it, we have it. And so now what you're seeing is this, the SaaS sales stack is now impacting the sales reps daily life. And we have special apps for SDRs, special apps for AEs, for AMs. And this is making it now that the best salespeople will be the most technology forward salespeople. They, they have more tools, they, are, can be, they can automate more, they can get stuff done quicker, and have more data and more analytics around what they're doing because of their ability to understand and manipulate technology. So this is now the time when sales is really becoming once again more of a hard skill you must know how to use your crm like a pro email automation contract management etc 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 which apps which websites are going to help you get your job done